Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So I'm here in Chicago, USA at the Turtle Wax headquarters and you're in for a total treat because I got a full-blown access to behind the scenes. So you're gonna see everything from the R&D to the product development to access to the CEOs and owners, the marketing team, even the lab because they have a chemist that blends their own products. They make them right here in-house and we're also gonna have a sneak peek at an upcoming product so stay tuned because I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. You're going to be the first ones to find out. And of course, well, no holds barred, they told me. I'm going to be asking a bunch of cool questions. You guys are going to learn a bunch of awesome stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the show. Nice. That would totally kill it. I love it. Okay, guys, so uh, something very special for me. I'm uh, sitting down with Sandra Healy and uh, Dennis Healy. So these are the uh, owners of the Turtle Wax brand. So first of all, hi, Sandra. Nice oh, to meet you in so person. Nice to meet you too. It's, a, it's an honor. And Dennis, how are hi, you? Hi, Pan. Good. How are you? Nice having you. Me. Well, thank you. This is an opportunity that's not only for now, uh, but to the future. Absolutely. So oh, that's, it's about a journey. That's right? what I want to talk about with my audience is that, well, first of all, you guys know Turtle Wax. It's one of the biggest car detailing products company in the world. Of course, an American-based company. We're here in Chicago, so at their headquarters. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have an all-inclusive access to whatever I want in the HQ. Um, but Turtle Wax is a global brand, so you guys, I think, are in 120 different countries. 75 years, guys, of family history. This is the same family that still owns the brand. I think that's something that's pretty rare in the space. So if you can just touch on that, who started it? Because I think it's someone in your family. And uh, how it came about, and even how the name Turtle Wax came about. Can you guys... <sighs> One person, one amazing man, my father, Ben Hirsch, stopped at Turtle Creek and he got out his pencil and paper and said, you yeah, know, turtle, turtle, turtle wax with a hard shell finish, clean, so shines, started. and protects. Okay. So that's how it started. And from that point... So he point, had a vision. He saw and he that had creek. a vision and he went through. He would go to... Um, uh, Wrigley Field. Baseball games. Baseball games. Okay. And he would have his product and do fenders. Only one fender at a time. I don't know how many. On people, people's cars? On people's cars. On people who were watching the game. Oh, yeah, the, watching the game. The yeah. They'd come out and say, what are you doing with so my car? So they were car? not expecting this. As, wait, what do you mean? Why does this site look so great? So uh, it, it all started with Ben Hirsch, which was your father, moved on to you, second generation, and then third generation, your son. But my, my, and my, my husband, Dennis Healy. Yes. And then in the footsteps is our son, Dennis John Healy, right? <laughs> <Thank> and, <you. laughs> and I can't tell you, he has that, he has the, the momentum, the feeling, the desire to just make things the best they can. So much well I'm that, so proud Dennis, of him. Dennis, it's, it's so inspiring. By the way, guys, I'm sure um, you guys can relate. You, you can see how a, such a big global brand first started. There are often uh, humble beginnings and it doesn't necessarily mean that people are already millionaires and they don't uh, necessarily have the most diplomas in the world. It's innovation, it's drive, wanting to work hard and have a vision, right? The, it's, it's like I, I see Elon Musk today, so the kind of a visionary for the future. Your, what your father was able to achieve seems to be like a vision for something that he saw he needed to improve and he knew he could work really hard to produce, really hard to work at, and then you just build from there. And I'm, I'm sure it inspires many of you guys out there. Maybe you're a future generation. But Dennis, what would you say? First of all, what's your position within the brand right yeah, now? So uh, right now I'm executive chairman, so I oversee the long-term strategy of the business as well as the day-to-day -day operations. And my drive is really to continue the legacy established by Ben Hirsch, the founder, my, my grandfather. Uh, in order to really have innovation at the heart of everything we do, 
to deliver the best new cutting new technology, constantly innovate, finding a better way to improve upon existing products that we have now, uh, be it professional or, or consumer globally. We're in over 108 and 120 countries, as we mentioned. That even blows my mind. Yeah, I, I did so not think it was that much. Yeah, yeah. We're very well established globally, and, and, and my drive primarily is to continue the legacy of my grandfather, Ben Hirsch, you know, to really bring this brand and everything we do uh, to new heights and make sure that we're delivering the top quality new products, finding a better way and delivering the best products we can. We embrace that, that, that people are taking our products, putting it to torture tests, and we want to continually provide the best products, the best technology out there at an affordable price that's easy to use too, mm -hmm. that's accessible for everybody, be it a professional, prosumer, or just the weekend warrior. And one thing that I also noticed, if I may, is the employees, I, I touched on this a bit before, they, they, everybody seems to be happy and there's this family environment that I have rarely seen, not only in the detailing world, but I mean, I've had other jobs in my life when I was younger and there, there has never been this dynamic that I see that is ongoing. It really is and culture is critical to, I believe, any company's success. And that really separates us from a lot of our competitors out there. We're pretty much the only family business left in this in this sector, Which is very and rare. we really, you know, harness that and, and and believe that we can use that as a competitive advantage to be able to react to the marketplace to engage consumers. But it all starts with the culture, with the people, and the alignment toward finding a better way, innovating all the time, and that is what we are as a business. That is our ethos. I love that. I'm taking mental <laughs> notes because I, I, I like to soak all of this in. These are successful people and I think you always have to learn from what they have done and try to emulate or at least try to, to get that same aura going. And that's one thing that I, I like to do as well as Pan the Organizer. I continue to learn. I started out as this channel nobody knew and here we are today. I'm lucky enough to be a part of this experience with you guys. So thank you very much. Thank you so Andrew, much, Pan. It was thank my pleasure so to have much. you it on the show. It was wonderful. Appreciate thank you, Pan. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. it was appreciate wonderful it. what you're doing. Thank That's you. what's exciting. Thanks, guys. That's what's thank you all. Exciting. Thank you all. Thanks for listening. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm uh, sure you can tell we're in a different environment. We're actually in a lab, so I will wear my safety goggles on because I'm with Mike Schultz, so the head of R&D here at Turtle Wax and also the resident chemist. Mike, thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you for inviting us. And we're here now in the lab to kind of understand basically what your role is and a bit of how it's made, so how it makes it to like the chemistry, how you blend it and why those products exist maybe. Okay, let's back up a little bit. First of all, as chemists, yes, we all bring to the table a certain amount of technology and experience in formulating certain products. But a good chemist uses the power of observation. In other words, and also tries to understand the audience and who the customers are in what they're trying to achieve. That's what makes our lab a little bit different because we're hands-on, plus we also have the formulation experience. We start with a premise, we start with an idea, and we try to build that product to fit that idea and get the performance. So it really is a lot of blending in the lab, uh, stabilizing things, actually putting them on car finishes, paint panels, uh, testing them, driving the cars around, and then the power of observation to see what's going on. Okay, so if we look at, say, a product, as I said, Seal and Shine. Mm -hmm. So it's already a fantastic product, it has five to six months of real world durability, spray on paint sealant. So now the hybrid solutions line comes down and you came out with the ceramic spray coating. So how did that come about? Why was it created? And how did you bump an already great product up to the level where ceramic spray coating is now? Okay, well, the answer is real simple. We learned that from, from people like you and we learned it from a lot of the people on YouTube. We want people to be able to use our products and actually enjoy using them and be very satisfied 
with the end results. We did that with Seal and Shine. Then we knew that coatings could be a problem because they needed a certain amount of technical expertise for people to use them. So what we did is we designed products that actually had all the UV inhibitors that you would expect to see in a, in a coating, the ease of application, the ease of removal, but also the durability and the shine that you could physically see, touch, and feel. So yes. that was important for us. We want our consumers and our customers to be able to buy these products and use them successfully, whether they have a daily driver or especially automobile. And we go through all those testings to prove we can do that. So how do you, is there a way to explain to the audience how that works? Like what's the chemistry behind uh, bumping gloss up on automotive paintwork? The only way to really produce uh, the highest reflectivity is by mechanical polishing, okay? And one of the things that we've been able to do in what we have uh, aluminum oxide platelets and they're slightly different than the aluminum oxides you see in a lot of other compounds because ours are flat platelets that slide and glide. So instead of gouging into the paint which can leave a micro marring on the finish, yes. ours slide and glide so you produce more of that mechanical cleaning so when you use one of our polishes you're going to get that. The other thing is something called matching the refractive index of the paint coating. What we're doing is we're actually using polymers that kind of uh, uh, control the refractive index and match that on the clear coat. So you get a true angle of reflection in and out, not bent and not scattered. Okay. That's the secret. And that's what I tell my audience too. It's nice that you touched on that because I don't use gloss meters in my videos. I know a lot of YouTubers do, but it's always to take with a grain of salt because it's not because you get a, a numerical reading on a machine that it necessarily translate to what your eyes are seeing. That's so right. what I always tell my viewers, which is the most important, is regardless of those figures, when you use that paint protectant or that polish, what do your eyes tell you? If your eyes see more depth, more gloss, more reflection, uh, and an overall better shine or a warmth to the shine or a colder shine, well, that's what you have to rely on because at the end of the day, it's not a machine that's looking at your car, it's yourself. Absolutely, and also uh, to the type of driving and to do in the weather conditions. We all like it, want our cars to look beautiful on a bright sunny day. Yeah. Then that's the type of lighting you want to use to judge, make your judgment, so. Is it true or is it a myth that over time that protective layer, so the clear coat itself, which I think contains the UVB and the UVA protectors or UV inhibitors, UV blockers, however you call them, uh, does that diminish over time and so you're, you're losing those protective qualities and that's one reason why you'd apply a wax, a sealant or a ceramic coating? Like what happens over time to the clear coat and why do we apply paint protectants? Okay. It turns out that when you rinse the car and you see that film on the car, that probably 99% of it is a silica sand or quartz. Okay. So if you can imagine when you wash your car and you yes. grind that light dust into it, you're gonna, it's gonna scratch your finish. Of course. And these are the type of scratches that can ruin your clear coat or lose the reflectivity. That's why it's important to use the different types of wax and sealants and coatings on the car because you do need to protect that from the daily grime that you get on your car as you drive it. Uh, one thing I have for you, Mike, is I'm gonna ask my viewers to do something cool because I like interacting and while we're here, why, why not do this? Um, I'm sure there are some products that you guys at home would love to see a company like Turtle Wax come up with. So something that you, you maybe have thought of at home or a void that you see in the market that you are praying that somebody will create. And I'll come out with my own example that I wanna share with Mike um, is ceramic coatings. So all my viewers know I absolutely love ceramic coatings. My car is ceramic coated, I have many tutorials. Um, and they'll last many years. However, the traditional ceramic coatings in those glass bottles uh, take a harder time to apply. It needs a bit more experience. You have to worry about curing times and flash times. And so the other end of the spectrum is the easy application of spray-on coatings mm -hmm. that will give you a six to 12 months protection. But what I would love to see is something in between 12 to 24 months. So I'll give you that over a year to two years protection, but still in the easy spray on wipe off formula, or maybe a liquid that you'll apply with a microfiber applicator and then remove, but that's it. Like take away any stress of flashing times, curing times, and a bunch of different methods that you need to apply and worry about uh, the application as far as prepping the clear coat beforehand, basically making everything as easy for the end user as possible, but still getting that two years plus of protection. I think that's a challenge that I'm sending on to you yeah. guys, but that's one thing I would love to see. You know what, it's great to hear that from you because again, one of the things we're, we work on is we, we see what coatings work out there, how they work out there, 
We want to make them easier and better and easier for everybody to experience and to use. So I'm glad you brought that up and that is definitely something that fits within the mission of Turtle Wax. We want to make sure that we got the best coatings out there, but they're easy to apply and use. You don't have to have the experience. So I'm glad you brought that up and it definitely will be something in our radar later on. We'll hold you to it. So Mike, it's always a pleasure. Thanks right, for being thank on you, the show. Man. And now uh, he needs to get back to work and continue on that development and all of the mad chemistry that I'm sure goes on into this lab. So thank you for having me. And uh, that's it guys. That's for this portion of the video. All right, and thanks for being a customer. All right, guys, well, I'm in the uh, detailing bay in the R&D development room. So I have Rod and Fred, also known as Fraud. They're a team, right? So hi, guys. Absolutely. Thanks for doing? being on the show That's again. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Um, so I hear that you guys are head of R&D. So, so that the viewers know what is R&D in the um, detailing business. What do you guys do on a day to day? Well, we have a group of chemists here that controls kind of like the, the global research and development effort for the entire company. And what that entails is going out and finding new technologies, researching new raw materials to bring in um, kind of new benefits to our products. Then we take those raw materials and we formulate with them, put them into different products so that we can come, kind of come up with the next innovation. We not only take those technologies and incorporate them in formulas, we also test them here. So we have next to our research and development lab, we have our detail center here, see if they kind of like where the, the metal meets the road, the rubber meets the road, we test those products and see if they meet our standards. And if they meet our standards, then we feel like we can present it to the world. So something like these, which I can see here, they're not commer commercially labeled bottles yet. So this is testing and there's like these numbers on there. So these represent, I guess, different iterations yeah. of each product that yeah. you guys work on? That's our formula number. And so what happens is it's not just one formula we make. We actually have numerous ones. You know, we, we get feedback from marketing, from sales, from everybody to see how the, which way the formula should go. And then from then we tweak it on to, you know, different variations. But be honest, is there any time that you guys give feedback back to the lab and there's this kind of feud or, or fight going on that they're, they think they made something that's awesome and they don't expect any negative feedback? No, we're chemists. Always welcome to, to give, yeah? No, we're, oh, chemists, yeah, just, yeah, we're yeah. chemists just like them. Okay. So we work together. Now, okay. the, when, the, when the chemist takes and makes something, it's kind of their own creation. So there's a little bit of, you know, kind of favoritism for certain things. They put a lot of passion into making that formulation. So if the test results don't go their way sometimes, sometimes there is a tendency to kind of hold on to that a little bit and test a little further to just dig deeper to make sure it wasn't just that test result for that day. So then we'll extend that test period just to prove something out. There may be a particular material that you're working with yeah. that has certain claims and you've seen it work brilliantly one time and you've seen flashes of that, but you don't see it consistently. Well, we can't give the consumer something that's not gonna work the same way every time. So then we continue that test to kind of iterate out any weaknesses in that, see how we can build it up. Okay. Yeah, like we, with, with we can't our, always just say, oh, it's user error, because sometimes we always try to see what, what is your biggest complaint or what's the, what's the negative feedback about. So we always, we always investigate. We don't just like brush it off because we, we like to see what they're seeing also. Okay. How much of an impact is the environment? So meaning like the temperatures, obviously here we're in Chicago in the United States of America. So you guys kind of get winters that maybe not as bad as ours in Montreal, Canada. However, you do get winters. Um, so I guess you guys test during winter, during summer, rain, he, uh, but snow, uh, ice, all that kind of stuff. Is that important oh, to go through different types of conditions? Extremely important, yeah, because mm -hmm. you know you get a lot of also you get a lot of bugs from Florida that you'll yes. never get up in, up north. Here. So yeah. just different factors, so many factors, just temperature, humidity, altitude, all those play a, a big part. And so we try to do a, a nice uh, wide range so that way. At least it covers the entire entire country. We always do testing on cars to see how it's going the weather. So we don't just do things in a static environment, yes. in a controlled environment, because that's not what the consumer's going to see. Absolutely. So we have to mimic all the time what the consumer's going to see. Fantastic. So, so guys, I see here, and this is a uh, preview on Pan the Organizer. It's the Hybrid Solutions Ceramic Acrylic Black Wax. So this is in a spray bottle. And we have the uh, Hybrid Solutions Ceramic Acrylic Black Liquid Wax. So two bottles. Well, I guess, again, this is a liquid type wax, two and this is products, spray yes. format. What is this? And what can you tell us? All right, so they're both waxes, and Rod can speak to it uh, probably in a lot more detail. But we have a, a spray version 
and we have a liquid version. So obviously, uh, with black cars, they're going to show a lot of blemishes, more so than any other kind of paint color. So we want something to give correction to, uh, to any scratches or swirls on the vehicle, want to remove oxidation, but we also want to kind of give it a deep black wet look as well. So we kind of came up with this, this new approach to it where we combined some of the chemistries from our traditional Car Nouveau wax line and we also brought in some new um, you know, technology with the ceramics and some new polishing agents to kind of give a better, more even precision cut to give more consistent results to the consumer. Can we have this uh, demoed on a black have, vehicle? We, we do? Vehicle okay, so I would sorry. love to see that. I just love pushing the envelopes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going too far, but no, you know what? All access for Pan the Organizer, that's what we get. Um, we'll probably see, of course, when it's fully released, a, a complete review, because I think this is a question I often get from my audience is, I have a black car. What would you recommend for black paintwork? So I'm guessing this is going to be, this and we all know how good the hybrid line is, the hybrid solutions line uh, is for now. So I'm, yeah, I'm super excited about this. All right, guys. So while I'm trying to keep these two under control, uh, we're here on this 2015 Land Rover LR2. It's a black paint. And as I can tell from the finish, there are a lot of scratches and swirl marks and blemishes, some light oxidation in some spots. Uh, basically, this vehicle have, has seen better days. Uh, so we're, it's perfect to put their new products that are up and coming. So their uh, hybrid solutions, the uh, ceramic acrylic black wax. So this is the finishing step. And they have the uh, black liquid wax, which is kind of a polish. So uh, basically a two-step, is that correct? Yes. So you'll polish first, get it to a, uh, a mirror finish, and then you'll apply this for some added gloss, gloss and protection. And All right. Protection, yes. Well, it's obvious because we're going to have a 50-50 shot. So I want you guys to put it to the test and just show us what people are going to be able to expect. Okay. I'm very curious. So right now you're applying the polish? Yep. As you can see, there's no powder residue, so you got a lot of a longer work time. I can tell from the uh, the pigments on the tape there is some black coloring or some black dye, so that's going to help with the pop or with the black paint. Exactly. Can you? Um, how is it to apply or to use in direct sunlight? I know that's one thing my viewers often ask me. Can we use these products in direct sunlight? Because not everybody has access to a garage. Is that possible with this? We prefer when you're using anything that's going to polish the surface yes. to maintain the oils that are in there to be a lubricant and a carrier that you do not use it in direct sunlight or on a hot finish. Okay. So like your traditional type products, we want to keep you in a controlled environment as much as possible Perfect. to maximize the benefit. So if you are to work outside in the shade yes. on a cool surface, on a cool surface absolutely. of course, always read the instructions, but absolutely. okay. So that's the polish and that polish. cleaned that up quite nicely actually. And you did what, just a few passes? Just, yeah, it's a couple yeah, of maybe passes. Like you can almost see like that candy, candy coating kind of wet look kind of starting to pop out a little bit. And that will only improve with, uh, with another pass. So now we're going to go over it with the, the spray. So now that's the uh, spray wax. Yeah. All right. So is that a necessary two-step, or can you use just the polish if you want you to? You can use one or the other. You can use okay. them both separately. So if you okay. just are a spray wax user, and you don't, you know, you're intimidated by getting out the buff or polishing, yep. and you're just looking for a quick kind of shine and a spray wax yep. with ultimate protection, then you can use the, just the spray alone. Um, or you can use the polish if you just need to correct. Is that it? That seemed that's like it. too easy. Really? Yeah, that's that it. too easy. And it'll build on itself too. So he can, you, can, uh, you can apply another coating as well. So easy spray on, wipe off application, and then the slickness. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, you can, you can see that, that kind of color pop and that, that kind of shine come through. Absolutely. Like I can tell, we have some pretty harsh lights in the detailing bay, and, and it's like yeah. crystal clear so compared to this so side image is really coming that out. hasn't been polished there uh, with the swirls and scratches. So we can tell the before and after like yeah seriously there's huge difference so i'm sure you guys can tell on this side this is the uncorrected side and this is the corrected side so here i think it's pretty obvious we see kind of a milky effect a bunch of swirls and scratches in the finish and this light oxidation and then if we move on the uh, 
site that was corrected and protected, look at this, so deep gloss. The majority of the swirls and scratches were removed and you can tell all the metal flakes, hopefully on camera this translate, but they really pop now and you get this really jet black effect. So I mean again, untreated, treated, look at that. So you're correcting minor defects, yes. you're removing those slight swirls and scratches, a bit of light oxidation, Absolutely. you're giving that deep pop, the shine, the depth mm -hmm. in the vehicle, and you're adding a bit of protection. Is there any protection the in this? The ceramic protection. So yeah. the, the same kind of ceramic protection you're getting from our ceramic products, really? we have that technology in here as well. Okay. So it's not just all about shine, it's actually going to give you shine that's going to last. Okay. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank I you. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Right, guys we're back in the detailing bay and right now i'm with jim he's a brand marketing specialist did i get that right you got it right i got that right all right so hi jim okay. welcome to pan the organizer show and the cool thing about jim is he's also an ida certified trainer so first of all what is the ida and what is a certified trainer what do you do for the ida so the ida is the international detailing association and what they do is they bring awareness to the detailing community so basically it's to make sure there's a certain standard that's reached Absolutely. from detailers. So you are a professional detailer? Yes. Oh, and Turtle Wax is lucky then enough to have an IDA certified trainer within, of course, their facility. Because uh, what is your role exactly then? What do you do for Turtle Wax? So currently I'm the brand marketing specialist. Okay. Um, I do a lot of work with uh, the marketing team on new product development. So what they have me doing is taking the new products that we're using, testing them as a professional detailer to find out what accessories might be good with those products. Okay, so I'm the consumer, I'm in a store, and I'm looking on the shelves, and I wanna improve, of course, the gloss, the look, the feel, uh, the depth, and all the pop on my vehicle's paint. So what would you recommend like, to, to have as far as a pad or, or machine combo that would work good with this? What I would recommend is using the least aggressive pad if you're doing it by machine okay. um, possible to get your desired results. So take a, a, a light polishing pad, do a test spot on the vehicle to find out where, you know, your level of, um, you know, swirl removal or defect removal is. If you like what you see, continue yeah. doing the rest of the vehicle. If you're um, doing it by hand, you know, just grab your foam applicator, your microfiber wax applicator, and, and perform the service. Okay. So guys, well, you saw it again, Turtle Wax. Not only are they great at innovating, developing awesome products, they have their own chemists who blend in-house, but also have IDA certified trainers, real detailers working on real life cars to make sure that you guys, the end users, well, once you get to test the products, you get the same results that these guys are getting. And well, thanks a lot, Jim, for being on the show. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate have a good it. one. Yep. guys, well I'm here with uh, Darren and actually I'm a guest over at Turtle Wax so thanks for having me here. Um, Darren is the uh, Chief Marketing Officer at Turtle Wax and so well we're going to pick his brain to kind of know what his role is uh, but Darren I have seen Turtle Wax like innovate a lot in the recent years and the new hybrid solutions line that's obviously a big part of that innovation but for the viewers out there and for myself as well um, when we say innovation what is that what is your role in the company what do you guys do is there any way you can give us an insight into all of that? Well, I'll do my best. Obviously, it first starts with the culture of the company. I think we all, um, as we try to uh, be engaged in the car care category, we're always thinking about what is the next big trend? What is the next big opportunity that we can move the Turtle X brand into? So it becomes part of a, a lifestyle. Um, innovation is, it can be really, to me, it's simplistic. It's really about how are we gonna make products easy for the consumer to use, giving them the best technology. But it's also a mindset that we have in this company. We're always looking to have the best products to accelerate the, the performance and uh, it just becomes a, a way of life for us. And we were talking a bit about, um, well, how social media and maybe influencers or the detailing YouTubers like myself, how like we, we seem to play a, a little role now in that innovation. Is that true or like? It absolutely is. One of the things I brought up to you is when we think about the innovation process now, um, it has to be global. 
and that's super tricky. Turtle Wax is in 120 countries. So as, as I try to lead my team in innovation, we can't just think about our market, the US market. Um, I read all the time in your comments that when we launch a product, there's so-and-so from another country asking, when is this gonna be available? Is it gonna be called the same thing and different things? And that has actually really changed some of our strategy. We do not want the confusion. We also wanna be able to launch that as quickly as possible in a global way. And that is a big challenge for us as a company. Not only do I read the comments and respond, but the brands are actually looking at what you guys are writing, what you guys want out there, uh, what your experiences are at 1.2 with, with the different products from different brands. And so, yeah, the outreach now, I guess your, your mindset is different because our audience or our reach is global now. And so you, you, I guess you have to focus on more than just one country. Exactly. Um, I, I think the days of just being able to rely on reputation are, are kind of over. And now that you, uh, the YouTube crowd has decided to even to the point test products in their own protocol, I will tell you that's actually changed our testing protocol. We have a very sophisticated testing protocol on products now that was never in place a year ago. And if I can pick your brain maybe on something, because the way I got back into um, kind of wanting to explore the Turtle Wax brand was through Seal and Shine, which was an absolute hit. Um, and I hear that's one of your, your babies that you kind of thought of. What or like, how did it come to market? What in your head said, you know what, there is a space uh, in the market right now for a spray on paint sealant that's easy to use, will give crazy protection. Uh, it so happened that it had insane chemical resistance. Yeah, you know, uh, Sealant Shine was, was launched uh, right at the beginning, I think with the onset of SIO2 spray detailers or, or spray waxes. And um, it, it, we positioned it uh, as a sealant. It still is a sealant. Um, it, it, we thought the time had come, especially under the ice line, that the, the next level of durability um, was something I think we could really contribute to. But I, again, the excitement of that skew was the, the opportunity to stand up, you know, toe to toe with anybody. Um, and prove out how great that product is. And you guys definitely did that. And, and I think my audience absolutely loved that too. And what I noticed personally with the new um, Hybrid Solutions lineup is the ceramic spray coating, which my viewers know is one of my favorite ones from the new lineup. It, it takes basically whatever we loved from Seal and Shine and bumps that up a notch. Exactly. So again, what was in your head when you thought about the Hybrid Solutions line? You already had a great product in Seal and Shine, so why or was there a reason why you came out with the Hybrid Solutions lineup? Yeah, so the, the Hybrid Solutions line was first uh, an attempt to uh, give a little bit of a premium space between the rest of the Turtle Wax line. And part of that was to, to move away from potentially any stereotypes that people have had on the brand. In, in a sense, the way I look at it is it's a really an ongoing technology for us to have going forward. You, uh, the, our definition of hybrid solutions is you're taking at least two or more different types of chemicals and or you know something that's innovative and you're actually creating a new idea out of that. And so it allowed us to get into this more of a technology innovation platform than I think that we've had in the past. Fantastic, yeah. well thanks a lot for all the insight and I just love the, the fact that I can kind of pick everyone's brains and we'll have more guests of course on, but uh, thanks Darren, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so we're here with two marketing gurus from Turtle Wax, namely Matt from the UK and also Kelly from the headquarters right here in USA in Chicago. But for the viewers' knowledge, basically, yeah, what's your everyday life? And let's start by your positions at the job. Sure. So my name is Kelly Cagney. I am the global marketing director for Turtle Wax. And my job is to get everybody very excited about the Turtle Wax brand. Um, I think my title should actually be Turtle Wax Hype Girl. Um, so my job is to connect with the consumers, get them excited about Turtle Wax, see all of the amazing stories we have to tell, whether it's from a product perspective or a lifestyle perspective, and overall just really tell our story and make sure that we are telling stories that people love to hear all around the world. Matt Chapman, I'm from I'm marketing controller for the UK. So my job is to bring all of that brand over to Europe, Middle East and Africa, which is our kind of territory that we sell to. Um, translate that brand into local European culture, making sure that the brand fits 
that lifestyle of that consumer, but then also still ladders up to the main brand. So what does a marketing guru, when they're here at the office, what would your normal day look like? So our day here usually starts with all of us collaborating, talking through trends and data and insights and analytics that we're seeing, yes. um, listening to the consumer. So we watch a ton of YouTube videos. We, do you? We do. Really? I have a few favorite channels. Um, I wonder who. Um, but then we also, uh, you know, we read a ton of comments on social media. And then we take those insights and we figure out, oh, you know, we're seeing a lot of people have questions about streaking or on foam and so we take that those comments and questions we turn them into social content or a video um, we also have new product launches that we're doing such as the black line that you've gotten a peek yes, at absolutely. Um, so we are currently in planning for that and figuring out the best way to create a really cool video to tell that story and um, you know, we get to do events and go meet consumers one-on-one -on -one, like you saw at the auto show Absolutely. or perhaps it's a rally. So we're planning those types of events. And then the other piece of what we're doing is we're also working hand-in-hand -hand with product development on what is the next great idea from Turtle Wax. So all of those insights, all that data that we have is also fueled back into Darren's team so he yes. understands what the consumers are looking for um, so he can help think of that next great idea. Awesome. And Matt, I yeah, think I got a question for you because I remember us discussing over supper the other night, not every market has the same target audience or the same products that are sold. I was shocked to learn, like for example, in some countries, polishing is a more important step, so they'll, they'll buy more polishes than they'll do paint protectants. Every, every territory is, is different in terms of the weather, the um, living status of people, so in some territories it's lots of apartment living. They haven't got the space to be able to clean on the drive, so they don't wash the car themselves, they get it done at a car wash. And that's part of the, the marketing job is finding out what's different in each of these territories and then balancing that act because consumers don't know what they don't know until you go and tell them. Yes. So we find out what their needs are, translate that into product, and then bring it to market. So another thing that I noticed, and I'm sure my viewers, my viewers have noticed, there's been a shift in the turtle wax culture recently. Uh, I say in the past two years, you guys have blown up on social media. Uh, literally pretty much every detailing YouTube channel right now talks about your products because, well, they are the real deal, and I'm happy to say that, um, and, and we've seen the proof. However, I think where you guys distinguish yourselves is that you were able to understand that influencers and social media and people who have YouTube channels, they're a big part of the business now, and you, saw, you somehow understood that that was very important, and you got us to be involved with you. So what I, what I appreciate and what I like is the, the outreach and say, I have a feeling now that I'm a part of this brand resurgence or this, this new direction that you guys are heading in that's absolutely mind-boggling. So maybe touch on how did that come? We, um, we approach it as a calculated risk. So our brand strategy up until this point had really been talking to a mass consumer, somebody who loved to wash their car maybe once or twice a year, um, and we had great products for them. But we knew that they were loaded with awesome technology. And we, we were very aware of, of how people pictured us in the category, where they felt our place in the market was. Yeah. We knew what technology we had. We said, now's the time. If they don't like us now, I don't know when you're ever going to like us. So we said, let's let's do this. Let's try. And we said, you know, at this point, to your point, what do we have to lose in the marketplace? Yeah. So we sent, you know, beautiful packages. We sent, hand, you know, handwritten letters and reached out and just said, try us. Please, please you know, take a second look. We want to hear what you think. And a lot of it, too, was a listening exercise yes. because we all know how thoughtful the YouTube community is. And, and the detailers that were putting out those videos were. So we knew, if anything, we were going to get great feedback on what you were looking for so we could continue to be better. Luckily, you guys loved our product. Absolutely. And from there, that little, those sparks of, of surprise and delight that you were getting as you were discovering and rediscovering our product line then fueled us to reach out and say, you know, we're here for questions. We're here to help you understand. We're also a family-owned and operated company. And so for us, that personal connection is just how we've always gone about business. It's why we've been here for 75 years. Um, many of our relationships have been built on handshake deals that we've had for decades. So that's how we're just doing what we normally do. It's uh, very you know, sincere. It's part of our culture and the fabric of our community here. Yes. And that's why we wanted to reach out and just put faces to the names. That's why this type of video is really important. It's the people that are working every day together to move the brand forward. And it just comes purely out of passion and excitement for the Turtle X story and the category and continuing to help 
other people elevate. We love hearing that when you guys post a video, you get tons of views or you get more subscribers or you've gotten to go to cool places that you've never been before because we love that about the business too. Yep. So it's all about connecting those dots and, and that's why we started reaching out and building relationships with the influencers yes. is because it's purely just what we've been doing for 75 years. How important is that aspect though to you guys now? Because I mean, you have access to either radio, TV, ads, newspapers, um, local shops, online shops, where is or what space does YouTube occupy? Is it really important? Is are we just at the beginning? Is it something that you really look into? I, I think we're de definitely entering a golden age of being able to speak directly to enthusiasts. That for the past 20, 30 years, that it's just become a little commoditized as a category, whereas now you can fully explain the benefits of, of car care in long form, which is just sparking this kind of resurgence of people interested in looking after their car. Um, which you couldn't do through traditional media and, mm -hmm. and even long, you know, even that adverts and editorial couldn't quite express. It's given birth to a whole new generation of people interested in looking after the car. So I don't think we can understate how important it's been cool. to the category and then consequently to us. And one thing I love about what I've seen so far, we don't have this corporate feel. So do you feel that, Matt, as well? Oh, no, I, don't, I, think, I don't think we'd know how to do it any other way. I've been here 20 years, and it's through the um, personal relationships that we have. We've got distributors in Europe that we've been working with for as long as the brand's been existing. I mean, we do a lot of spreadsheets, and we do a lot of PowerPoint, <laughs> but it fundamentally comes down to uh, that connection we have with people. And that's the whole theme that I've seen at Turtle Wax, is that every single person in this building is just, I mean, genuinely enthused and really passionate about the brand, passionate about detailing. And well, uh, I know there's a bunch of cool stuff coming from the marketing side and just from the rest of Turtle Wax as well. So Kelly, thank you Thanks for being on the show. Matt, it's been a pleasure. And uh, that's it, guys. Okay, guys, let's, let's just have a quick look if I can find anything special for you. Hopefully he's not there. Okay. There's a bunch of products. Oh my God, these are, ooh. Hybrid solutions. Guys, I'm sure. This is a work in progress, but what's in there? We were just talking about this, guys. Hybrid Solutions, they're ceramic acrylic, black polish, and they're black wax. Look at this in like this matte black box. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. No, I'm good. Yep, I'm coming. Oh, that's horrible. I just, I just missed that. That's not good. Can we redo it? So guys, that's it for me. I've been sleepless in Chicago. Not a lot of sleep in the past days. I was at the Chicago Auto Show with Turtle Wax and here visiting their HQ, but I think it's all worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of a video. If that's the case, smash the thumbs up button to show me your support. Also, if you want to continue to learn more about car detailing, products, equipment, tips, tricks, and techniques, make sure you click the subscribe button that's found under this video. And that way you'll subscribe to my channel and never miss my future videos. So guys, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. And in the meantime, don't forget, Keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.